Hi, everybody. This last week we talked about John the Baptist. And if you remember from the scriptures, he's, he's a bit of a wild man. He wears furs on his back and he eats locusts and honey and he lives in the wilderness. He's totally strange. Um, he's a very sort of off-putting kind of figure. But amazingly, this guy gets the kind of traction that brings in um, the fanfare for the Savior, the coming Jesus, that this guy, strange and peculiar, far off in seclusion in the wilderness, has a message that all Israel needs to listen to. And we pointed out that the fact that he ends up getting arrested for defaming the king shows just how broad his influence was and how much the rulers of the day cared about his, his statements about them. And that just shows just how effective of a minister he was when we consider the fact that he was talking about the coming of a new king, a new ruler, Jesus Christ. Uh, and John, John being this wild character, this strange person, but having such a strong and beautiful message, it reminded me of a rock song I listened to growing up. A band called Switchfoot was one of my favorites. Um, if you want to get in the head of middle school or high school Alexander, listen to Switchfoot. Um, they had a song called Beautiful Letdown, and it's sort of about not being of this world. And at the end of the song, uh, he sort of goes on this rambling part of this, this section where he says, uh, we're a beautiful letdown, um, he says, we're, we're the church of the dropouts, the losers, the sinners, the failures, and the fools. We're a beautiful letdown, painfully uncool. And so it just gives you that idea that, like, the church has never quite been what we thought we ought to be. We're not the elite. We're not the, the smartest, the strongest, the most popular, but the most influential, the most well-spoken people. But the church has persisted through victories and failures of human beings through the strong and the weak, the rich and the poor, male and female, uh, throughout all of history, because God is the power behind it, because God and his message is the power that we have in Christ. It's nothing to say about us or our ability um, as evangelists, but the power of the, the message of God is, is what changes lives. Um, it, the word of God is given to us by him. And so we get that in front of people and lives are changed because he gets to speak directly into their lives. And if you guys haven't caught it yet, I really, really care that we learn to be evangelists, that each of us, even our church, even us, we can learn to be that missionary force in this needy place in Durango. Uh, we really are always trying to put our eggs in the baskets that we can't afford. Revival speakers or uh, more celebrity-esque kind of, um, you know, leaders and things like that. We're, we're wanting the, the, the music that will somehow attract uh, the non-Christians that don't listen to Christian music. We, we make these mistakes all the time in churches, not realizing that God chose a fool like me and a fool like you, a person uncool like me or you, non-influential like me or you. He's chosen our church to show the power of the gospel uh, to show just how pleasing and sincere this, this, this message can be when it's taken seriously. I and mean, that's what I love about our church, is when people come into our church, they're not impressed by anything else, but they experience a sincere faith among us. And I really hope that that can be the case when we're not together, when we're spread out across this town in our different mission fields, in sort of the diaspora of our calling. We are greater... Um, it's sort of like that divide and conquer mentality. We're greater when we're spread out. We get to come home to church. We get to visit with each other, be encouraged, be filled with the spirit, be filled with the word, and go and share just a little bit of something we've learned that week, just a little bit of something we've experienced that's been sweet from God. And so I wanted to remind us of Paul. Paul was just like absolutely the most effective missionary ever, right? Like there's no question. He's just amazing. Uh, he made three separate trips. He was doing short-term stents in, in these areas. I mean, short-term, relatively speaking, he wasn't spending a career in Corinth. He was spending, you know, a little while in, in these places he was, he was visiting. And still he, like, he reaped a harvest of those crazy established churches and elders and discipled guys that he could send as his representatives that he knew would take care of business because he had trained them up well, right? So we think of him as this mighty man of God, and we definitely know he's, he's clever. We definitely know that he's well-read, but... When he gives glimpses into him, himself, his own view of himself, we find a lot of interesting things. We remember, you know, there's at one point where he's defending his apostleship, his, his ministry as an apostle, and he's saying, you know, people are complaining that 
I'm so bold in my letters, but then when I speak to you, I'm, I'm really quite weak. But he's like, what we are in our letters is what we will be in person. Um, saying that, you know, my intentions, my heart is all there. I'm all for God, and I'm going to hold his standards well, whether or not you find me popular. <laughs> um, and in verse, uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, uh, in verse 1, we get a little bit of a glimpse into his ministry to them as well. Um, he says, when I came to you, brothers and sisters, announcing the mystery of God to you, I did not come with brilliance of speech or wisdom. I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling. My speech and preaching were not with persuasive uh, words of wisdom, but with the demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might not be based on human wisdom, but on God's power. I think if we do a little bit of introspection today, a lot of times our faith in, in Christ's messages is, is um, really our faith in just the strongest link in the chain of Christian evangelism. We, I, I have my favorite speakers, you have your favorite speakers. We all have that person that we thought, man, if I could just be like that person, I'd be effective uh, for ministry here. Paul went into his ministry with fear and trembling, shaking because he was afraid of his commissioning because he was afraid of his his work um he was scared he was a human being flesh just like you and me totally insecure he decided to know nothing he decided to know only christ jesus crucified for him to love the lost to love those far away from him he constantly had to defend his ministry he constantly had to reaffirm his calling to others because he was always derided by people that thought he was a lesser man because he went to the Gentiles or thought he was a lesser man because of his past. But he knew that he was called by God. And so I wonder if today, if during this Christmas season, while we miss our friends and family, whoever we do come into contact with, whatever influence we do have, would you be willing to be painfully uncool to that person, painfully uncool for the sake of Jesus Christ? Would you put his name out there just a little bit to show people the power of this message that's changed your life, that's worth embarrassing yourself over worth reaching out and going out on a limb worth feeling that rejection for i find that when i say yes to those moments jesus feels really close to me jesus feels more real to me i get to go into a deeper and more intimate relationship with him because god acknowledges those who we acknowledge before men right um i said that a little wrong right <laughs> that uh jesus will acknowledge us before the father if we acknowledge him before others, that's the right way to say it. So um, I, I pray that you would just be very serious in seeking out that personal calling. Who's that one person that you can try and reach? Who's that one person that you can encourage to show the love of God today using whatever spiritual gift you have? Um, seek it expectingly because God wants it from you. God has a plan uh, through you. Thanks.